when I stepped into the real world, got my own place and lived on my own for the first time ever, I did not get a warm welcome. In fact, what I got was everything you know is a lie. And in particular, everything financially that I thought I knew was a lie. I just walked in with a lot of these preconceived notions. I just thought things were supposed to be a certain way just because the textbook that I read in college said so. I thought life was supposed to be perfect. I thought you were just supposed to graduate, step out into the real world, get your own place, start building up your money, go to work every day. It's going to be easy. You come back and then you rest and then you keep doing it. You relax on the weekend and that is how life is going to be. You get married, you have kids, you end up getting a house with a white picket fence, you have nice cars, you keep building and building and building and it's time to retire and then essentially you die. Like that was my overall impression of how life was and how money would pretty much work. It was crazy because I thought I was out here doing well. I thought I was adulting and doing the right thing. But then when I fell flat on my face a few times, I felt like I was bamboozled. And the biggest thing I had to wake up to was the fact that I had been lied to about money. And it wasn't just like one lie, it was like several lies. And the main reason I'm telling you this isn't just to say, hey, by the way, guys, you've been lied to about money is to make the point that there's not too many things in life worse than the feeling of just feeling that you've been lied to and you should have known more about a particular thing that would have actually added value to your life and your family's life and your friends' lives and things like that. And you feel like you're further behind because of the fact that you couldn't get ahead with truthful information about money. And that's where I come in. And the funny thing is guys i actually read this really good passage in a book that articulated this point extremely well and i would like to read it to you real quick the great financial lie the moment i stepped into my adult life i slowly but surely started to learn that everything i knew about money was a lie i was taught that education was the way to wealth and that those who didn't receive a higher education will be left behind i was taught in terms of pay per hour and pay per year I was taught that $50,000 a year was the average salary in America, so anything above that is good money. I never knew that anyone could make money despite their education, religion, ethnicity, nationality, gender, or anything of that nature. A lot of people still don't know that. I never knew that $50,000 is relative and what matters is the amount of money you make in comparison with how much the cost of living is in the area you live in. If you live in a place like New York or California, that $50,000 is in a completely different world when you compare making $50,000 in a place like Alabama. I was conditioned, told, and taught to believe that making $20 to $30 an hour was good, and the only way to make more money was to make more per hour or work more hours. There seemed to be no other way. Despite the fact that I knew of some people who beat the odds and became millionaires or even billionaires without a college education, I was made to believe that this was reserved for the select few lucky people. I was led to believe that those who weren't as lucky, such as you and myself, would have to work for a living for the rest of our lives. This is the great financial lie that has created generations who chase money in the form of salaries, job titles, and wages per hour to the point where many will do whatever it takes to get a wage that caps out eventually. What's worse is the fact that this is also a lie that has created a false sense of accomplishment and success in the minds of billions of people around the world. Going to school is usually where it starts. You're told that because you have a fancy piece of paper, the world is now your oyster. That is a lie. Now that you've gotten your first full-time job, you are now considered successful. Also, a lie. When you get a degree or trade and you secure your first job, you've got to have a place to live and a way of transportation to get to and from work. You've also got to eat, sleep, shower, wash clothes, enjoy yourself now and then. You need AC, electricity. Because of this great financial lie, you do exactly what everyone says it takes to be successful and independent, only to realize once you receive your first paychecks, you're left with a lot less than you were expecting at the end of the month because your money went towards other people's definition of success. Not to mention debt or inflation. So sure, 
You could make $50,000 right out of college in a big city where you have your own apartment and car. You can pay for everything without having to rely on your parents and be considered successful by your friends, family, teachers, and everyone around you. However, in most cases, this is just stretching reality because the average person who fits this description is only one wrong step away from a complete financial disaster that creates more debt, poverty, and misery in this world, all thanks to the great financial lie. I didn't come to this realization until I was already on my own in my early 20s just trying to figure out life, let alone getting my finances together. As I worked toward learning more about money and how it works, I realized we've all been doing this money thing backward. It's hidden in plain sight. The common way of thinking about money is a product of the great lie. I never even thought to challenge any of this until years later, as I was sitting on my couch, rethinking my life decisions, and asking myself a mind-numbing question. And that, my friends, was the passage from the book. And if you want to know what book that was, that is a book called The Wealth Journey by Yours Truly. I'm extremely proud of the book. You can get it on Amazon up here if you want to. But not only is this video a shameless plug for that book, but I just really want to speak on this point. I could not believe the moment I stepped out of college how different the real world was than everyone was saying. Like people were telling me, yeah, it's going to be hard, but they never told me what about the real world was hard. How about the real world is just cutthroat? How about no one really cares about you? How about the fact that you're going to have to balance your sanity, your mental health with your job, with your bills, with your relationships, with your friends? You know what I mean? With how to even manage your money if you're the type of person that wants to get ahead financially, which I definitely did. So that I had to balance a lot of things on top of each other. And not only was it hard to balance, it was heavy to balance. And it was hard to learn all those different things at once. And some things definitely did fall through. Relationships ended. Friends grew apart. I didn't get to see family that much. Because I was told that I'd be working about an average of 42 hours a week, which sounds very good. It sounds pretty normal until you realize I actually didn't work a 42 hour average. No, I worked an average of 72 hours per week without fail, almost right out the gate. I'm talking a couple months into my job. So I didn't know about these things. And yeah, I was making overtime. Yeah, I was making good money. But if you have money without the knowledge of how to use money and how to manage money, how far do you think you're going to get? So yeah, I didn't get to see family. I didn't get to see friends that much. I didn't get to do hardly anything that I wanted to do. I felt guilty when I would go out to eat because I felt like, man, yeah, I'm making a lot of money, but I'm spending a lot of it on food. And what if this job just goes under one day or what if they just get rid of me one day because it was a cutthroat company people would cuss you out tell you you're going to be fired all of this stuff it was like a daily thing i saw what happened to my peers i was like what's stopping that from happening to me i'm no different than them they don't care if i have a family or if i don't have a family they don't care if i'm younger if i'm old they will treat me the same exact way they're treating all these other grown folks up in here that have been putting decades of their lives into this company and so i was just sitting at home one day and i really came to the realization i've been lied to about money and I started thinking, like, you're told and taught to go to school, get in debt, massive, massive debt for a lot of people, right? And you end up getting a, a job, hopefully a good job, so that you can hopefully one day pay that debt off. But not only do you have to pay off that debt, you also have to survive, like, as a human being and pay for food and a roof over your head and running water and electricity and all these things on top of transportation, yet... We don't get informed about things like life insurance, 401k, other types of investments, how you can make your money grow and work for you when you're sleeping and when you're working and when you're doing anything else. We're taught the bare minimum and then we're expected to operate normally as adults. And that's why we have so much stress in the world that is because we've been lied to about finances and, and the lies make so much sense. We believe them that we just operate based off of those lies. We operate off the fact that, yeah, $50,000, that, that's the standard that I should set for myself. And there's nothing wrong with making $50,000 flat. There's nothing wrong with making $40,000. You know what I mean? There's something wrong with creating an expectation around this is my cap. I'm not going anything above 50K. I'm not going above anything 60K. That's 
where our mind starts to shrink because our way of thinking becomes so small that the positivity that we would have to get us to a certain goal that we want, if we wanted to make six figures, you know what I mean? It causes us to shrink our goals and make our goals more realistic because it's not attainable anywhere else. Hey, the average in America is 50K. That means you should be shooting for 50K. You'd be lucky if in 10 years you were getting 60K, 70K, 85K, 100K. You'd be lucky. I remember one time I was 22 years old and this guy told me, yeah, you might be making six figures in 10 years. I guess that's why I got there four years later then. And I know I'm coming off as passionate and hot about this, but this is real serious to me. Like, just imagine how different your life would be today if you were not misinformed about money. Imagine if in school or even if your parents had the knowledge to sit you down and teach you, hey, this is how budgeting works. This is how the basics works. This is the bare minimum. This is what you need to know right off the gate. If you don't know this, you're done for. You'll be in all kinds of debt. You'll be stressed out all the time. You won't be getting quality sleep because you'll be up all night thinking about, oh, man, how am I going to pay this bill? If they told you the impact behind the stress of wanting to have a life but not wanting to restrict yourself at the same time, how defeating that can feel. Putting yourself in a situation where you have to save a good amount of money just so you can have a peace of mind, but then not having the discipline to do it because you just, you got to go out with the boys. You got to have fun. You got to go out on those dates. You got to go out to the club. You got to do all these things because that's what life is all about. You're only 20 once, right? You're only in your 20s for a short amount of time. You got to live. This is your time to have fun and do all these things. And express yourself and blah, blah, blah. If only your parents knew and had the knowledge and said, hey, if you invested $100 a month since you were 16 years old, 18 years old, this is how much you could potentially be worth by the time you're 30. By the time you're 21. Money compounds over time. And so the earlier you start investing and the more shares you get when you're investing, the more you're going to be worth in the future. No one talks about net worth. No one talks about actual realistic income goals no one breaks down what income really means and how after taxes this is how much you actually make that they don't break that stuff down that stuff gets broke down to you when you experience it and by then it is too late so i'll tell you this if this video resonates with you and it hits you a certain way i got a link in the description for you to click on where you can get weekly personal finance advice emails directly from me it's not just you know hey do this this week it's like actually conclusive it links to some videos i have resources that it also links to and all these other things that can help you get on the right track and it is 100 percent free and you could unsubscribe to the email at any given time but of course i also have my patreon and i also have my book the wealth journey and this right here is the hardcover right here but I don't really know where all that passion came from, but I really do feel a way about it. And the more people know the truth about money and they start to educate themselves about their personal finances and how money works and all these other things that you can get to, the further along you're going to be, the less stress you're going to have in your life, and the more you'll be able to provide for your family. And you might even get to a point where you never stress about money again. And then you teach generations like your kids and their kids' kids how not to deal with the same mess you had to deal with. That is the ideal goal. That's my ideal goal. I just know that whenever I have a wife, she is 1000% going to have the option. If you don't wanna to go to work, you don't gotta go to work. You can stay at home with the kids. She's gonna have that option. And then you know what? My kids are gonna learn and get the principles instilled within them how to manage money properly and how not to stress about money and how to make good money and how to invest and all that stuff. All the stuff that I've always wished I would have known earlier on. That's the difference between being 21 and stress-free or not even just 21. Some people deal with this well into their 40s and 50s, some up until their retirement. But in my case, that would have been the difference between me being 21 and being stress-free and not having to worry about anything and not caring what happened at the job and just only focusing on learning the job versus me being at 21, beating myself up, talking about some, why am I not further along? Because I ask myself that question a lot of times. I want you to have a peace of mind and I want your family to have a peace of mind. So 
I really hope you like this video. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.